Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well we've got another simple hover effect for you today. We've got an image right here when we hover over it it's going to spin in with a title and a call to action button. And obviously people can click on the button. When they let go it's going to spin back out to reveal the image again. Really easy to do. There's no actual coding involved in this today. We're just using all the inbuilt features of the Divi scene itself. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is enable the Visual Builder. OK, well, I've got a section, a blue tab with a row with two columns in it here. Obviously, you make yours whatever size you want. And the way these things are working with most of these image to text hover effects, the image itself is residing in the column of the row here and the actual button and text is part of a module that we're putting on top. So first thing I want to do is add the module itself. So I'm going to click the little button to add a new module. Divi comes as standard with all these modules right here, plenty enough to build just about any site. If you've got WooCommerce installed, it gives you an extra 12 as well to display your products. I'm going to use a call to action module for this today and this will work with any module. And what I'm going to do, it's got that background right there. All I want really is a title and a button. I don't want any content. If you want content, then put your content down here. But I'm going to take mine away. Just delete it like that. And there's no button at the moment. A button won't show up till you put a link in. So put whatever you want your button to say right there. I'm going to leave mine on click here. And down below, we're still on the content tab of the call to action module. Hit the link. And we can put a link in right here. I'll just put a hashtag in. And as you can see, the buttons appeared there. If you want the actual module itself to link to somebody else, somewhere else, you can put that in right there. And best practice with all these links is if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If not, you're linking to an external site, put it in a new tab so your site stays open. OK, well, I'm going to replace that background with something a bit darker. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to hit the black, but I want to take the opacity down so that when we put our image in behind, we can still read our text well, but it's going to darken down the image. So we're focusing on our button and our text here. So that's going to work for me, black with a bit of opacity with the slider brought down. Obviously, you put in whatever color works for you. OK, now we want to make it a bit deeper. We want to make it the sort of size and shape that our image is going to be or that's going to work for our image. It doesn't have to be exact, but it wants to show enough of our image to show people what the actual image is. So I'm going to go over to our design tab in the middle here. I'm going to go down to spacing. And I'm going to give it a bit of padding top and bottom. I think I use 120 on the one next door. And just put the 120 in, it'll put the picks, hit the chain in, and it'll do the opposite for you. Yeah, that looks about right. Now, when this starts out, I want it to be upside down and invisible. And then when people hover over it, it's going to spin back around the right way and become visible. And I'm also going to make it grow because when it spins, because of the shape of it, it's going to sort of reveal some of the image around the sides. I want to keep that to a minimum, so I'm going to make it large as well. So still on the design tab, I'm going to close this up. I'm going to go down to transform at the bottom here. And size wise, if you've got this first tab right here, transform scale will do the size. And if you've got this little link checked right there, it'll do both sides at once. So you can pull it up size wise. I'm going to pull mine up to about 200. Now, obviously, we don't want to see any of this that's spilling out of the column here, but I'll fix that in a minute when we when we go into our row to put the image in there. So it's going to start off like that. And then when we hover over it to set a hover state, common to most Divi modules, go up to the dark writing there, hover over it. If there's an arrow, you can set a hover state. Desktops when the mouse is not on it hover obviously when the mouse is on it. For the hover state I want it to be regular size which is 100%. So you can either slide it down or type in 100. It puts in the percent for you. So we've got this initially 
and when we hover over it it's going to change to this but like I said I wanted it flipped up the other way too so I'm going to go to rotate right here and you can flip it around whatever axis you want I'm using this one right here I'm simply going to flip it 180 degrees that way and I'm still on the hover here so actually I ought to leave that there Let's go to the desktop and make sure we're doing it the right way around. 180 that way on desktop when we're not hovering on it. It doesn't have to be exact as long as it spins back around. And when we hover on it, it wants to be at zero. And again, you can either type in a value, slide this thing, and you can increment up and down with the little arrows right here. Great. So the other thing we want is on the desktop, we want it to be invisible because we just want to be seeing our image until we hover over it. So let's close up the transform. We'll go into filters just up above it. I'm going to go down to opacity or transparency or th see throughness if you like. And again, let's hit that little arrow. Desktop, when we're not hovering over it, I don't want to see it at all. When we're hovering over it, we want it to be fully visible. Fantastic. Okay. Now the time it actually takes to go from this that you can't see right there to this by default with Divi is 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. Um, a little quick for me, it may work for you. So I like to slow mine down for a bit of drama. So to slow it down, go over to your advanced tab, go down to transitions. And here's the transition duration. There's the default 300. I'm going to take mine to about a second. The more you slow it down, the more dramatic it is. And again, of course, do it exactly how you want to do it. Speed curve I like to use for these. Ease in and ease out. They're all slightly different. They'll do different things in different situations. But the one for my hover effects, ease in, ease out is my go-to right there. Don't want any delay. want it to happen as soon as their mouse hits it. Okay, that's good. So let's save that. And now let's put the image in that we want to see because otherwise they're not going to see anything until they hover over it. So to put the image in, like I mentioned earlier, it actually resides in the column that our module's in right there. So let's go into the row, the green tab. We've got two columns, one, two. So we need to work on number two. I'm going to put a background image in. You've got color gradient image or video if you prefer. I'm going to put an image in. Yeah, let's just use the next image. Okay, so there you go. We've got an image in there, and when we hover over, that thing's going to roll back in. But because we made it huge, it's going to spill out everywhere. So to stop our little module from spilling out everywhere we're going to turn the overflow off because anything that falls out of the column is called overflow so to do that still in the column settings go over to advanced we'll go down to visibility and here's our horizontal and vertical overflow i'm going to set both of those to hidden so anything falls out horizontally or vertically we're not going to see it in other words our thing will shrink down within this picture frame right here so let's see it. I'm going to save this. Save the main row changes. We'll save the page changes. Save draft or publish. And exit the visual builder. There's our little image. When we roll over it, it's going to shrink down, pop in, and we can click that call to action. Because we've made the background fairly opaque, we can see the image behind it. Let go. And it's going to spin back out again. And these hover effects are great actually for getting people's attention. If people are mousing over your site and these things start to happen, it's going to get their attention pretty quickly, which is what you want with a website. So there's a really easy one. A little image with title and call to action button spin in on hover. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.